Welcome back to Postcards from St. Petersburg. This week we're checking out St. Petersburg's tram network. The first tram in St. Petersburg was set up in 1895 actually on the frozen river Neva on the ice. And since then, St. Petersburg's tram network grew until at one point it had the largest tram network in the world. Sadly, since 1995, the network's been in decline uh, and it's, it's currently not the most popular form of transport. It's seen as slow, not particularly clean. A lot of trams have been replaced by small mini buses or marshrutkas. Um, but I keep seeing them as I'm on the way to work and I often stop to take a photo because I think they're really pretty. So I've set off, this is my apartment block behind me, Golden Harbour. I've set off to my nearest tram stop. In fact, we can see a tram passing just behind the trees over there. I don't know if you see it behind. Uh, I've set off to my nearest tram stop, which is outside the Lent supermarket. And I'm going to ride the trams. Th this city is totally riddled with them. It's not just one or two main lines. So I'm going to ride the trams uh, eastwards then southwards into the city and then west across to Vasily Ostrovsky, Vasily Island where there's a tram museum so assuming it's uh, it's open I'm gonna pop in and find a bit about the history of trams So I've just got off the tram here at uh, Chornaya Rechka, uh, Black Little River. Now this is, the, this is the tram that I was on that's going to disappear now. Uh, and I'm going to pick up a tram going south from over there. Perhaps pick a little uh, samsa up or some snack on the way. So I picked up a couple of fresh sausage rolls for uh, 80 rubles which is more or less 80 pence and the tram ticket was uh, 50 rubles which is around 50 pence um i don't know yet whether that will work on the next tram i'm about to get on i'll try and see well tasty though the sausage rolls were i've kind of got myself in a bit of a muddle because the the tram track is there kind of in the middle of the road you can see a tram i think in the, the back there and, uh, well no that was turning off to the side uh, and there isn't really anywhere to, to get on. So I, I'm going to have to walk down to the next station, which is just across the river, across the Balshaya Nevka, the big little Neva, um, on Kamiany Island, on Stone Island. Yeah, well, I wasn't really convinced there. There was a sign saying there was a tram stop, but where the tram rail rails were in the middle of the road had um, kind of high bollards coming up, which would seem to, to block the travel of the tram across them. So I'm going to cross one more bridge. I'm going to cross the small Nevka, the little, little Neva, uh, to get to Petrograd Island. And on that side of the bridge, hopefully there, there is a tram stop there.
Well, things are looking up. I found a uh, tram stop and the number 40 on it, the stations that are mentioned, include Vasily Island and actually include uh, St. Petersburg Ground Transport Museum. So I think this will take me all the way I want to go. You can see the tram lines there are in the middle of the road with, with cars on this side. So when the tram comes, I think I just kind of have to dart in the middle to jump on it. So wish me luck. Well, so we've made it entirely by tram, except for a tiny little bit of uh, walking over there in the middle. Should be pretty close now across here to the, uh, the Museum of Public Transport. In fact, I think I can see it there just over to my right. Well, the museum is open, uh, but because of COVID, it's on uh, seances, uh, sessions. So uh, the next one is at half two, which is an hour. So I go to grab a coffee, read a little and come back then. So I just spent the hour in this nice uh, coffee shop, Cafe Bon, where I had a hachapuri, like a cheese pastry. I'll put the photo here and a coffee. And one thing I noticed whilst I was there, I should point out when I was on the uh, trams that they're very clean. Uh, the comment at the beginning that they were, they were dirty and slow. They are slow, but they, they're very clean. But sitting in the cafe, I noticed how noisy they were. Here one comes along by our side here, perhaps you can notice the noise of it. Sitting in the cafe every five minutes, there is kind of a slight rattle to the walls as, as they went past, so, so they are fairly noisy. But now let's head in the museum and see what we've got to see in there. I'm only going to focus on the trams in there. I believe there are buses and such too, but today is just about trams. So we've learned that originally the horse-drawn trams, there were one-storey and two-storey ones. The one-storey ones requiring a single horse and the two-storey two horses, obviously they went quite slowly. But apparently on the two-storey ones, women were only allowed on the first storey. The most interesting thing I learned on the trip was that the first ever electric tram was in Petrograd, the name of St. Petersburg in the late 1870s. It was an experimental project that was decided in the end to be commercially untenable which is why in 1881 was the first commercial electric tram in Germany. As we said at the beginning of the video, the first one that was in commercial use in Petersburg was at the, in 1885 on the River Neva. And here's a, a small model of it that they've set up. Here's the tram on the river. It took uh, two weeks to uh, set up at the beginning of the winter and just short of two weeks to dismantle at the end. Uh, so obviously it wasn't running for a long time, but nevertheless it was it was profitable because it was a very popular route. Um, but after several years, due to safety concerns, they stopped it, they discontinued it. Well, that was a great tour around the uh, Road Transport Museum in St. Petersburg, focusing on trams. Uh, I've learned a lot about the history of trams in St. Petersburg. I actually didn't realise that St. Petersburg had played such a big role in the development of trams over the years. And just to show that I don't discriminate against different land transport forms, I go to take the Metro back now. Well, the Metro certainly got us back to Primorsky and Ion quite a bit faster than the, uh, the tram would have. What I will say, there are certain, there are many routes, in fact, in St. Petersburg that the Metro doesn't cover. So I definitely think, having played a little with the tram today, that it's something that I would use in the future. And that's all this week from Postcards from St. Petersburg. I hope you've le enjoyed learning with me a little bit more about the trams in St. Petersburg. And we'll see you next week.